Um, so my talk is about uh, all these things, undefined, unspecified, non-deterministic, and implementation-defined behavior in verifiable specs. Um, so the talk is essentially about how to not specify something. So not how not to specify something, but how to not specify something. You have a specification, and you would like to keep something out of the specification. You would like to have a hole in your specification. Why would you like to have a hole in your specification? Um, so there are many good reasons for doing that. One might be that it's an obscure corner case. Nobody should do that anyways. And, and enforcing a certain behavior in this kind of situation uh, would make some implementations less efficient. And then you might leave some room for the implementers to, to do one thing or the other. Um, but there are many ways to actually do that, to, to leave a hole in your specification. And this talk is about the different ways to do that. Because in Risk Five right now, we have a couple of places where we leave things out in our specification, but we don't explicitly say, what does that mean? What can happen if someone still does the thing that the spec says you don't, you're not supposed to do? Um, yeah. So in, in order to understand my position on this, um, I think it's good to first look at the users of a specification. So there are software engineers, and the software engineers usually don't care so much about the details of this. Because if the specification says, just don't do this, they just don't do it. They don't generate this instruction with their compiler, or they don't write down this instruction when they write assembler code. Uh, but there are software security engineers. And for them, it's not enough to say, well, the attacker is not supposed to execute this instruction. They need to know what are the bounds of what can happen if someone trips into this hole of the specification. Um, there are also hardware design engineers. Um, and they just want to do a safe thing. Whatever is safe and the easiest thing to do. But what is safe? The specification must tell us what, what safe is, what are the bounds of what is OK, what is accepted, and what is not accepted. And then, of course, there are the hardware verification um, engineers um, who have a couple of problems with uh, falsifiability, as you will see in, uh, in the next slides. Um, yeah. So the rest of this presentation is just a taxonomy of possible ways of not specifying things. Um, and right now in Risk Five, we don't really have a nomenclature for that. Uh, so I, I picked the nomenclature from from different sources essentially. So if I am now saying this means that, and and you have heard this word before, and for you it means something entirely different, uh, don't be angry at me. It's probably because you have been working in a different field than I have, and therefore we have a different uh, um, idea of what those terms mean. And that's the whole point of this. We have to find our own nomenclature for this. We have to find our own specification, and cannot just trust that everyone already has some kind of, of intuition about uh, what does it mean to leave a hole in your specification. Um, and, and for the slides that follow, I will use the example of division by zero, but the spoiler, in, in risk five, division by zero is fully defined. Um, but it's still a very, very useful um, example here, uh, because in many uh, um, ISAs and contexts, of course, uh, division by zero is not defined. Um, so the first thing that you could do, this is more or less the default, as it is understood by many people, if you don't specify exactly what the semantic is for a hole in your specification, um, is just undefined behavior. Um, and undefined behavior is essentially the just don't do that approach uh, to specification holes. In a specification, you would uh, read something like, software must never divide by zero, or this spec is only val valid for programs that do not attempt to divide by zero, or simply division by zero is undefined. And that usually means that really the whole spec as a whole is invalid for the whole program as a whole if the program attempts to do the unspecified thing once, sometime. Um, and that's really bad for falsification. Um, I'll show you why. Uh, imagine you have this trace here uh, from a RISC-V processor. You execute an XOR of A0 with A0. When you XOR something with itself, it must always return 0. But this processor, it writes this uh, not 0 value into A1. And the next instruction moves A1 to A2. But in A2, we end up with yet another value. And then we have a branch instruction that says, branch if greater or equal, 0 unsigned. And of course, Every value should be greater or equal than zero unsigned. 
um, but this implementation does not branch. So usually when we see something like that, we would say, oh, we have found a massive problem in this processor. But maybe a million cycles earlier, that processor divided by zero, and now the whole spec is void. So I can't falsify this processor using this counter example because I, have also, I must also prove that this processor never executed the division by zero. Otherwise, this counter example is completely worthless. Um, and note, there is no data dependency between those two things. It's just the fact that the division by zero happened. Uh, you can think of this like a hidden state bit that is set when you do the undefined thing. And there is no way to query that state bit. But when that state bit is set, the processor is free to do whatever it wants. So that's bad. But it could be even worse. Because I said the whole program, uh, the whole spec is invalid for the whole program if the program attempts to do the unspecified thing. So um, if we could prove that this division by zero that might happen a million cycles later, that this is, it is unavoidable that we will hit that, then already now the processor is free to do whatever it wants. Um, so in order to, uh, to prove that this free instruction and this trace is a uh, a witness for a problem in this processor, I would need to solve the halting problem for the instructions between these three instructions and the division by zero that might come a million cycles later. So maybe we don't want to do that when we have holes in our specification. Uh, maybe we want to do something else. Um, another approach would be undefined values. So with undefined values, you have formally a new separate value that is different from all the other values that, for example, an integer could be have. And that's like the undefined value. This is similar to the X bit when you do uh, simulations with Verilog or VHDL. Um, and usually you would have something like division by zero returns an undefined value, or the result of division by zero is undefined. Um, um, yeah, so the big thing here is this does not say division by zero is undefined. It says the result of division by zero is undefined. Uh, and because of that, we are now talking about this undefined value um, um, idea. But we have a similar problem with undefined values. We could look at the same trace here. Um, so, sorry, the, uh, the idea is whenever you see an undefined value uh, and do an operation on that, the result of the operation is again undefined. So the undefined is sticky in a way. But in a real implementation, we don't have an explicit value for undefined. Instead, if the model tells us something is undefined and we sample a real implementation, a processor, then we might sample any arbitrary value. And so we end up with a very similar problem, only now we need the data dependency between the result of division by zero. But we could still end up with three instructions that do something like that. And I would need to prove that there is no undefined value anywhere in the inputs to these three instructions. So that's also not really good. Then there is non-deterministic behavior. The idea with non-deterministic behavior is that I could do the same thing over and over and I get different result each time. Um, this is actually very, very useful, but not for something like division by zero. Uh, but when you have a memory model, you usually need something like that because you can have a race between two processors and there is no way to make a deterministic spec where we say it's always this, always that, at least not without making a processor that's very inefficient. So we are coming to the, to, the, to the better solutions, because now it's not red, it's orange. <laughs> so an unspecified value, that would also be a, a possible semantics for, for a specification hole or another. Um, and it essentially means division by zero returns a value. So it does nothing really crazy, but we just tell, don't tell you which value division by zero returns. Um, so that's already much better for falsification because now I don't need to prove that the processor didn't divide by zero a million cycles earlier or something like that. But even better is implementation-defined behavior, where we keep the exact value that's returned by a division by zero in our example out of the spec, but we ask the implementer to be explicit about that. The implementer and uh, their documentation must somewhere say what is the result of a division by zero because it's an implementation-defined um, thing. And then, of course, we have the fully specified behavior. 
Um, if you have a choice, that's usually the best thing because then we exactly know what to expect uh, from a RISC-V processor. Uh, and that's what we have actually in RISC-V for division by zero. Okay, so division by zero is not actually an example of a specification hole with RISC-V. So what are actual examples of specification holes in RISC-V? Um, so there is a couple of uh, places of non-determinism, of course, in the memory model, as it should be. Um, uh, there is uh, a few things where we have implementation-defined behavior, and the most obvious one is support for unaligned memory access, uh, where a processor is free to either support that in hardware, or we would need some, some, some M-mode code uh, to, to emulate that in software. That's implementation-defined. Uh, there used to be a lot more in the, in the, in the floating point uh, extension part that is undefined, but most of that has uh, been uh, um, fixed in the more recent versions of the spec. In the privileged spec, there are a lot of CSRs that are implementation defined, where we have bits that are optional, um, and they just read back zero when they are not supported and are not implemented uh, by this processor. But there is also uh, a few places of undefined behavior in the pri privileged spec. Uh, and in most, it's by, uh, by omitting an explicit behavior. Okay, so in conclusion, um, undefined behavior and undefined values are not really a good idea because we can't falsify uh, an implementation. And, and that's a problem if you would like to verify the implementation because verification is nothing else than like showing that there is no, 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 no counterexample. So we don't want undefined behavior or undefined values. Non-determinism is fine for the cases where it's called for like the memory model. About those things, they're actually all fine, uh, but if you have a choice, it would be better to not use unspecified behavior and instead use implementation-defined behavior. And the main reason for this is that when you are verifying something and you have unspecified behavior, quite often for the verification process, you have to essentially reverse engineer the unit under test and make up your own implementation-defined behavior, and it might be just easier to ask the implementer to uh, give the information instead of trying to figure it out by uh, um, poking their core. That's it.